SCP Containment Breach Multiplayer is a compliment to both the SCP community and the modding community of SCP Containment Breach. This is the best mod second to, I don't know, the bread mod. This time, I'm not exaggerating when I say this mod is awesome. If you remember my viral hit, the worst part about Ravenfield, then you will know how much I hate Ravenfield multiplayer mod, and when I saw a multiplayer version of SCP Containment Breach, a game I like even more, I was very hesitant about this game being any good. But, because it was free, I downloaded the game, and what I saw, holy hell. This game runs at a buttery smooth 40 to 60 FPS on even the most complex maps. I don't know how Fusion Creator Studio were able to get this game to run so well, considering the fact that they both run on the same engine, which is Blitz 3D. Contrast this to base SCP Containment Reach, which ran at anywhere from 20 to 40 FPS on a good day, with the smallest maps slash seeds. And before you say, oh Wolfcast, you just had a NASA supercomputer compared to me. Well, my friend, whose computer is actually worse than mine, gets great performance on this game as well. Also, I only got one memory access violation, and that was probably because me and my friend were fucking around with console commands. Other than that, I haven't gotten any while just playing the game normally. Performance aside, this game has some great quality of life features, with one of the best being item names that show up whenever you're in pickup range of them. So now you can see what exact document is, or what clearance level keycard that is. I mean, level 1 and 2 keycards are basically the same, so this kind of alleviates that issue. Switches and knobs have had their sensitivity upped a lot, which just feels amazing, especially when using 914, because now you can actually turn the start key in one go. Oh yeah, and how could I forget the biggest one, the multiplayer. Oh hell yeah, Agent Old Grim, my man! Oh my god, I got killed. <laughs> the implementation of multiplayer was pretty damn good. Everything works exactly how you would expect it to. The only real issue is SCP-1048-A. Normally in single player, you see him in a hallway, run past him, he ear rapes you, and then he disappears. In the multiplayer, when someone triggers him, he only disappears for that person who triggers him and nobody else. So unlike Secret Lab and Ravenfield multiplayer mod, you can actually play this in single player, like I said before. So if you don't have any friends or you just have really bad internet, then you're still in luck to have some fun. And even if this game didn't have multiplayer, it still has that optimization. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this might be the definitive version of SCP Containment Breach. So, let's talk about the team a bit. They are very receptive to feedback, they have a Discord server with the usual channels, plus a bug report channel and a feature suggestion channel. So if you have an issue with the game or an idea that can improve the game, go join their Discord server and post a message to the appropriate channel. Also, they update this game a lot, so you can imagine that any changes you suggest, assuming they're good, will be added to the game pretty quickly. So, with this having multiplayer, that means that the game can't pause whenever someone uses their inventory or the keypad, which is fine. Alright, this isn't Half-Life Decay. But the problem is, this carries over to single player. Which is a bit rough, because you can't also pause the game whenever you use the pause menu either. So, you literally can't take a piss break if you want it. And that is just brutal, like, not even Keter difficulty and base SCP Containment Breach would stoop that well. The intro cutscene just doesn't work at all. As soon as Agent Ogren can walk, he goes straight into D9341 cell. They've got some work for you. Do me a favor and step out of your cell. Just follow me. Correction, the, uh, the day I was recording the audio, Fusion released a fix for the, uh, the guards in the intro being broken, so, uh, so that's great. Loading saved games is also a bit buggy. Sometimes whenever you load a save, you will either be dead and have to use console commands, which locks you out of an achievement, or your inventory will be flipped, which, you know, isn't that bad, but remember, the game doesn't pause whenever you open your inventory, so you need to keep the house cleaning and organization to a minimum. Or do it in 1499, because there's no enemies in there. Also, you can't load saves in-game, so if you get stuck somewhere, you didn't like your output in 914, or uh, if and when you die, you have to go back to the main menu and load back into the save. Oh, and say, you know, you just wanted to take a bit of a break from the game, so uh, you wanted to save and quit. Well, you can't do that either, because there is no save and quit button on the pause menu. Also, whenever you do get to the main menu, all of the text on the buttons will disappear. And this would have happened occasionally in SCP Containment Breach, but in this, it happens almost every single time. Like I mentioned in my server tutorial, when someone dies a few times, they get disconnected. 
I'm not sure if that's exclusive to my friend, who's usually the one who dies, or my dedicated server, but make of that what you will. One thing that I really hope you guys can fix is screenshots not working. I can't take screenshots using Steam, I can't use it with the Windows key and print screen, not even just print screen and copying it into paint works either. As you can imagine, this made getting screenshots of stuff in the game was harder, because I had to use my phone, and taking a photo of your screen just looks awful compared to in-game screenshot. Well, we don't have a map editor yet, which really sucks for people like me who just love to create shit for games, but the weird part is, there's a custom map variable in the server.cfg file, but there isn't a maps folder for custom maps to go. Maybe there was a point in which custom maps were supported, but it was removed for whatever reason. And another thing about servers is no one will actually be able to see your dedicated server unless they use direct connect. Well, there actually is a way to get your server to show up on the list, but it's not really intuitive and I think you should just have a separate tab for user created servers. After playing some more games with my friend Lightning Inferno, we discovered some more bugs. After SCP-049 has been triggered, he will occasionally flash in and out of existence at random times. This will show up on the SNAV, and yes, he can kill you if he happens to flash in really close to you. Now, I don't have any footage of him killing me like this, so you'll just have to take my word for it, but it does happen. Very rarely, or maybe depending on the seed, if you walk into the corner hallway with SCP-1162, all of the non-nostalgia items will just start spawning on the person who walks in first, and it does not stop. Yes. This does lead to performance issues, and eventually a crash I would assume. Now, this isn't really a bug, but it is an issue nonetheless. If you get disconnected or die in SCP-1499, you will drop all of your items in there, even SCP-1499. So if you like to use SCP-1499 for storage like a lot of people do, myself included, you can't go back into 1499 without using cheats. Lastly, a suggestion. Have other players show up as humans with the very fine night vision goggles because I hate trying to track down my friend whenever he gets abducted by Larry and immediately escapes the pocket dimension. Well, that's about it for all the issues that I had for the game. There are more, obviously, on the bug report channel on their Discord server that I'm not going to mention because I wanted to keep this section for personal issues that I had with the game, my thought process being, if I have these issues, then you will more than likely have them as well. With the hope being that there isn't some obscure bug that I mentioned that only I would have. So with all that said, what is my final verdict on the game? Well, I still think it's the best way to play SCP Containment Breach. I mean, it's on Steam and it runs better than the base game. All they need to do is fix those visual bugs with text and adding the map editor into the game. And when that happens, I would go as far as to say that this is the best SCP game out there and it probably will not be topped for a while. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please go join their Discord server, subreddit, and subscribe to their YouTube channel. And just show Fusion Creator Studios some love and, you know, maybe, maybe go donate to their, uh, their Patreon. They worked really hard on this and I think they deserve it, especially getting the game to run better. Easily the best part about this game. Well, you know, that and the, the multiplayer. Oh yeah, and, you know, go download the fucking game on Steam. It's free, you literally have nothing to lose because the game is less than like half a gigabyte in size. And if anyone from Fusion Creator Studios watching this, well, I just want to say, you guys have my respect. What you have accomplished here with SCP Containment Breach Multiplayer is, is just amazing. Like, I am super proud of you for not letting this turn into the dumpster fire that is Ravenfield Multiplayer Mod. You have my support in this project, and I can't wait to see what projects you guys will do in the future. Didn't you die here? Uh, gas mask. Yeah. Oh nine. Oh, oh four nine. Oh four nine is here. I can hear his breathing. No. Oh my god. What? This is it. I know this isn't gonna work, but I crawl up in here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I'm scared to take this off now. I'm so scared.